I just think we're getting into that point in, in training camp where we're really getting to know the guys, you know. Um, they're starting to face some adversity and fatigue and so forth, and with that comes ebb and flow in terms of performance. I thought that uh, the interior of the offense won the line of scrimmage today. Uh, we'll see how the interior of the defense responds to it tomorrow. All of this is very much a part of the process. Uh, like the general growth and development, uh, we'll keep rolling the ball out, provide opportunities for guys not only to learn but to show themselves and to grow. Um, been a good process thus far. Um, not a whole lot new on the injury front. The guys that have been out for a number of days, we sent a couple of these guys you know, into the city to be evaluated. Uh, Antonio Brown went in to be evaluated. I have more information, but again, largely, it's probably could be characterized as a day-to-day -day type deal. Villain the waiver, same thing. Uh, Sean Davis and Morgan Burnett continue to work their way back. You see Burns kind of stepped out of that group today and was more of a full participant. Um, not a lot to speak of. I think Tucker maybe rolled his ankle, um, wasn't able to finish, but we'll see how that goes. That could probably be characterized as day-to-day -day as well. So a lot of day-to-day -day type things, such as life this time of year, um, nothing of any significance, and we're thankful for that. Uh, questions? What is Brown dealing with? Just a day-to-day -day minor uh, injury, uh, nothing to speak of. Lower upper body. Again, nothing to speak of. <laughs> Did Al go in the city and come back, or was AB um, the only guy that went to the city? I, wasn't, I didn't reference Al in, in regards to that. I referenced uh, AB. Mike, do you like what you're seeing out of your young, young defensive backs out there? You got a bunch of them. You know, um, man, we got a lot of guys to sort through. Um, we challenge them, having them play multiple spots, and. Uh, I like the way they're representing themselves, but you know what I said in the opening, I think really is significant about all these positional battles. I think just after you hear a good solid week and you're working, uh, you really get to see how the, you know, the drudgery of it wears on them or does not. And oftentimes that defines the ascending guys. Mike, heavy red zone today. Did you like the, what the defensive backs were able to do in that, in those drills? Um, you know, they made some plays. Um, you know, I didn't watch the seven on seven. I was down with the big people. Um, they made some plays. They gave up a few, uh, such as life, to, on a day like today. Mike, what do you see from Okora for? Um, I, I like the fact that he's taking advantage of, uh, you know, some of the rep opportunities he's getting, and, um, and and that can be said for a lot of the young guys, man. When you're in an environment like this, you have a guy that goes down. Uh, one man's misfortune is another man's opportunity, and so um, he's gotten some extra reps. I think he's taking advantage of it. Uh, but the big thing, in order to take advantage of it, you got to be in physical condition to do so. So that's why back in May and in June, we talked so much about physical conditioning. You have to set the stage to take advantage of opportunities like he's getting right now. And uh, so I'm glad he's in position to do that. When you have young running backs, is pass protection kind of a work in progress since they probably didn't do much of it? And um, it, it very much is a work in progress. And, um, you know, we don't assume anything. I think more than anything, we we're pleasantly surprised when they show skill sets in that area. So um, it's one of the things that we attack and attack in a big way. That's why backs on backers is such a significant drill when we put the pads on because we recognize the significance of that transition at that position. What about Mike Hilton that made you want to try him back in a safety type position? Um, you know, he's a good tackler. How's Mason's progression? Uh, Rudolph? Yeah. Um, it's early in the process. We're just beginning to get to know him. Um, you know, oftentimes that position is defined by what happens in stadiums, mm -hmm. and appropriately so. So you'll never hear me paint with a broad brush or make too many drastic comments about his progress, positively or negatively. Um, I like his general approach to the work. Looking forward to Friday Night Lights tomorrow? Always. Man, it's great to, to get in that environment, to, to work at night. Um, you know, um, every, every step in this thing, I think, is a significant one. Um, you know, stepping into that stadium, leaving this facility is, is a component or, or, or a step in the process for us. You know, a week or so from now, we'll be stepping into another stadium. Uh, so I'm always excited about what this step tomorrow night represents. Do you get a sense from the guys when they go to the Friday Night Lights that they kind of ramp up their enthusiasm a little more? I'm, you know, I'm not looking for it. I'm not trying to create it. It just happens, you know. The energy in that in that venue when we get there, um, the closeness of the fans to the to the field, it, it'll happen. I don't worry about it. I don't worry about trying to create it. Do you know much about the two new guys you had out there today? 
no, I kind of met him on the fly, you know. <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you got to get on a moving train. You guys heard that cliche from me before. You'll hear it again, I'm sure. Here with former Steelers wide receiver Louis Lips. Louis, what was it like playing for the Pittsburgh Steelers organization and, and just having the pride associated with being a Pittsburgh Steeler? Well, I tell you what, uh, it, it's one experience that I'm glad that I didn't have to experience too much with any other team because this organization is uh, was well run from top to bottom. Uh, they get great athletes in here and make great things happen. Uh, the fans are just uh, totally unbelievable. Uh, they make you want to go out there and do great things. So uh, coming in and playing for this organization was uh, was not only a, a blessing for me, but uh, it was something I would truly, truly uh, remember for the rest of my life. John Stallworth really took you under his wing. What did he do for you in your career? <laughs> well, uh, I, I'm going to just say this real short because, uh, you know, we watch practice. Like, you watch practice in groups, but John actually showed me how to watch practice. You know, a lot of guys watch practice because you got to watch practice after practice. But we would watch practice after practice after practice, just amongst ourselves, and then that's when you can really you learn, you see what's the reason behind watching practice because then you can watch your deficiencies, you can change, you can see what you're doing wrong, what, you, what you're doing right, work on the things you, you, you're doing bad and keep doing the good things. So, uh, you know, that was, that was one thing and that was big. I mean, because in this league, you gotta, you gotta have film study. And if you don't have film study, when you're not gonna be successful. What was it like being a first round draft pick and what emotions were going through your head when you were drafted? And I, I just couldn't believe it. I mean, uh, you know, my whole thing was just, you know, hoping that I got drafted by somebody, uh, let alone being drafted in the first round by the Pittsburgh Steelers of all people. And, uh, you know, it, it, it just totally blew my mind. And even as high as I went, well, 26, I mean, it was still in the first round, but uh, never, never even imagined it. Did you ever expect to be Offensive Rookie of the Year and have such an amazing first season in the NFL? <laughs> No, well, you know, when you're a rookie, you just hope that you get a chance to play, let alone uh, being being offensive rookie of the year. But uh, you, you just go out there, man, and you bust your buns, and uh, you, you work hard, and, and you give it your all, and you leave it out there on the field. And then, you know, if you did good, then, you know, everything else will take care of itself. And, uh, and for me, I did some good things that year and, uh, you know, and got rewarded for it. What were some of your favorite memories as a Steeler? Oh, there, there's a lot of them. I mean, uh, you know, a rookie of the year is one. Going to the Pro Bowl is another one. But uh, but for me, I got voted the Steelers MVP not once but twice, and that's voted with from the guys that you go to war with, and uh, you know, and in that locker room. And when those guys think that you are that valuable to the team, well, that definitely means a lot. So, being MVP. You hear a lot of guys in the league say that this is about relationships. Who are some other people who really influenced you during your playing days? Oh my gosh, I mean, it was it was all of them. David Little, God rest his soul, uh, Donnie Shell. Uh, oh man, I can go on down the line. I mean, <laughs> Calvin Sweeney, uh, Larry Brown. I mean, those guys, Benny Cunningham. I mean, those guys had already been there. They had already won Super Bowls. They know what it what, it, what it's going to take to go there and, and, and get another one. And it was trying to show you how to do it, not to do it the right way. And uh, it, it, I, I just had an awesome experience because a lot of people told me, "Oh man, you came there too early. You came there too late. You know, after the first four, before the last four. <laughs> you know. So, but I, you know, I say I got here at the right time because. Uh, you know, if I had a chance to do it all over again, I'd do it the same way. Getting drafted by the Steelers and training camp in Latrobe and everything else. So, uh, yeah, I, I was very, very welcome to do what I did.